This video will discuss partial molar quantities in thermodynamics. So now we're going to go from looking at the thermodynamics of a system where we have a single component, for example, pure liquid A or pure liquid B, and we're going to think about what happens when we start to mix things. So we have a solution where we have A and B mixed together, for example. And we're going to look at, in this chapter, quantities like the enthalpy change of mixing, entropy change of mixing, Gibbs energy change of mixing, etc. So in order to do that, we're going to have to start introducing some new ideas, particularly this idea of partial molar quantities. So for a two-component system, our Gibbs energy is now going to be a function of not only the temperature and pressure, but the number of moles of substance 1 and the number of moles of substance 2. So for some perturbation or small change in our system, dg, the change in the Gibbs energy, is going to be <clears throat> the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant everything else, pressure and number of moles of each, times dt, plus the partial derivative with respect to pressure at constant temperature and number of moles of each, times dp plus the partial derivative with respect to number of moles of component 1 at constant T, P, and moles 2 times dN1, time, plus uh, the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles of component 2 at constant temperature, pressure, moles 1 times the number of moles of change in number of moles of component 2. All right, so some of these quantities we're already familiar with. So partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to temperature. That's equal to the negative entropy as a function of T, P, N1, and N2. Partial derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to pressure is equal to the volume, which also depends on temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of substance 1 and 2. Um, the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles of component 1 that is our definition of chemical potential. That's the chemical potential of substance 1, which is the would be the molar Gibbs energy of substance 1 if it were a pure substance, but we're going to call it the chemical potential whenever it's in a mixture. Okay, because it does depend on the number of moles of each uh, component. If the, if the ratio of the moles here varies, then this, this quantity can vary as well. And the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles of component 2 is the chemical potential of component 2, again being a function of T, P, and the number of moles of each substance. So now we're going to introduce the, the idea of a partial molar quantity. So molar quantities are things where we take our thermodynamic functions and we div extensive functions and we divide them by the number of moles. So G divided by N is the molar Gibbs energy. S divided by N is the molar entropy. V divided by N, the molar volume. So when we take an extensive function, we divide it by the number of moles, we get a molar quantity, which is an, ex which is an intensive function. So in this case, it's a partial molar quantity because it is the molar quantity for substance I in the mixture. So for example, a partial molar quantity for substance I, as I've indicated by X bar here, is a function of temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of every substance in the mixture. So this is equal to the partial derivative of that quantity with respect to the number of moles at that quantity, while I'm holding temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of every other substance in the mixture to be constant. So some examples, as I mentioned, of partial molar quantities are going to be things like the chemical potential, the partial molar Gibbs energy, the partial molar volume, partial molar entropy, and partial molar enthalpy, all of which we'll be looking at in some detail in this chapter on liquid-liquid solutions.